All right, welcome to our regularly scheduled live show at 4.30. It's actually 4.30 to you. Thank you guys for waiting. On September 22nd, 2015, <coughs> I'm joined by Mark uh, here in the GITV Live studio. Uh, we've got a couple promos to go over really quick uh, before we get into the meat and details. <laughs> Um, first of all, uh, this is our Operation Counterattack or BB Wars Counterattack live show. We're going to be going over, uh, you know, stuff that's coming up for BB Wars Counterattack while Mark sits in the back, bored out of his mind. Um, first and foremost, though, we've got a special deal going on right now. If you have, if you place an order on airsoftgi.com for over $60, you're going to get a free gift card with your order. Now, in addition, you can use that with our four, is it 495 or 499? 495. Five. 495 flat rate shipping. So if your order is over $60, you can also use our 495 flat rate shipping and you'll also get a free gift card. Uh, now that 495 flat rate shipping is good for anywhere in the lower 48 states. Um, in addition to that, um, obviously BB Wars Counterattack is coming up in less than two weeks. It's going to be at Code Red Airsoft Park 2.0. It's their brand new location in Paris, California, right across the street from Paris Valley Skydiving, my old drop zone. This is a really great field. They're building it as the Disneyland of Airsoft, and the field is actually very large and very diverse. Uh, Mark and I actually had the chance to play uh, play there very recently in their uh, Western Town Code Red Dead Redemption. Um, also in District 9, where I think you would agree, it's pretty easy to lose people on that field. Everything's gray. Oh, yeah. Everything's gray. It, you know you know who we lose, who we lose in there? Huh. Greg. Oh, yeah, because he wears all gray. <laughs> that's, that's funny. I didn't think about that. Um, yeah, Greg, Greg Wong wears uh, all gray. And if you get a chance, check out his YouTube channel, Spartan117GW. Um, so, yeah, uh, a lot of great things about this field. They even have a section called Terminus that's based off of that, uh, that building from The Walking Dead. Now, what's really interesting is, uh, obviously, you know, it's it's a great new field. Uh, we have a lot of great fields in Southern California. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were worried co uh, Code Red was going to go away, and we're happy to say that is not going to happen. And we're probably going to be that they're not not necessarily a grand opening, but we're going to be the first event at this field. So if you haven't had a chance to come check it out, head on over to BB War or head on over to AirsoftGI.com. Buy a ticket for BB Wars Episode 3 Counterattack so you can check out this new field. Have a chance of winning some awesome raffle prizes from Classic Army, and I've recently been informed they might have a fully functional minigun there. Cool. Quite. Um, now, in addition to that, um, we've got BB Wars Battlefront Flashpoint, which is going to be happening at D14 Airsoft in Texas. Uh, I believe that's on Sunday, November 8th in Sanger, Texas. D14 is a great field as well, and they've been adding a lot of new cool stuff to their, uh, to their field of lever refinery, which is pretty awesome. They keep adding more and more things, and I'm always surprised whenever I go there. Um, so if you're out in Texas or if you're in the Texas area, get a ticket for BB Wars Battlefront Flashpoint that's coming up very soon and sponsored by Lancer Tactical. They've also got some, some pretty interesting new products coming out, uh, including a Barrett and a, uh, a, a an AG with a stunning amount of recoil. That was a Lancer Tactical MMC blowback. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. We also have a zombie game coming up, BB Wars Battlefront Zombies in Northern California. Now that's on Sunday, October 24th. Zombie games are always fun. Really wish Mark was going to be there. Are you going to make it, Mark? I am going to try to make it there. You are going to try to make it there, said very deliberately. <laughs> um, um, zombie games are really great. It's always uh, having people. It's always great having people on your team that are fast. That's Mark. Uh, who are good shots? That's Mark. Uh, who have good trigger response? Also Mark. Um, now we're not going to necessarily allow full auto for the majority of the game because no there's some issues with it last year. However, if you have good trigger response, Mark, um, then you're going to be just fine on the battlefield, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And these zombies do run. Which is really important. If I go, I'm gonna wear all black. Like the only thing, my my goggles will be black too. That's actually probably a good idea, except <laughs> for the goggles part. So, uh, let me just move that. The camera. lens will be clear. The lens will be clear because everything will look black because there's gonna be it's gonna be really dark. So with a black hat and black ball clava, or no, black um, what do you call those the Zan neoprene face mask. Yes. And then black BDs, black. Uh, let me not black player here. Um, everything black and I'm gonna wear like since game pods more like a not like a dirt but like a smooth payment um, running shoes obviously mm -hmm. running shoes not combat boots because why running shoes are actually have a lot more traction than those type of pavements so and one of you guys we have hats since Bob did the top of the morning to the top of the evening well, someone said I had a nice hat and I yeah, appreciate that Richard comment, can too someone also comments like Mark nice hat I'm like I'm not wearing a hat <laughs> Well, it's a good haircut. Mark just got a haircut. Um, Jace, uh, Jasona99 <coughs> or Jason A99. <laughs> Bob, any BB Wars uh, games coming to Virginia soon? Yes, I'm glad you asked. In fact, we're going to drop an announcement for a BB Wars game coming up in Virginia 
near the Chesapeake area in probably the next day or two. So stay tuned to airsoftgi.com and our social media for that. Uh, it's going to be a big one. In fact, you might say it's the final BB Wars game of the year because it might just be the final BB Wars game of the year. Uh, and also for all the people that are saying uh, nice hat, first of all, uh, Richard Cantu, your shout out is approved. This is a hat for my buddy uh, uh, Peter Gallo from his family farm, uh, Joseph Farms. They make a lot of great cheese in, in addition to other produce. Uh, Joseph Gallo Cheese, if you guys ever heard of it. Um, Let's see. Um, in addition, um, actually, Mark, could you grab those Caterway M4s back there? I really want to show those off. Caterway is dropping some new product on us, and it's pretty cool. It's actually not new product, but they've done some work behind the scenes to make something uh, a lot more affordable. You can get their full metal KWA KM4s. This is the KM4A1. Mark has the KM4 Shorty, essentially the CQB variant. You can get these full metal KWA guns for about a hundred dollars cheaper than they used to be. These are on our website for I believe $199.95. So they're actually going to be discontinuing their CQR lineup and it's not because there's anything wrong with CQRs. They're actually just making room in their inventory for these bad boys. A lot more of them. And what's great about it and why they're discontinuing, discontinuing the CQRs is that they're going to offer these for ten dollars more than CQR. So if you just pay an extra ten bucks you get a full metal KM4 which is pretty amazing and uh, you know this is a uh, I would say the outdoor field ready version since it's 390 to 400. The KM4 Shorty CQB is 340 to 350. So you have a CQB and a field option from KWA with a full metal body. Awesome. Uh, Victor Aguilar, Bob, why you know why you know like my photo on Instagram? Follow Victor Victor A Airsoft. I don't know. Maybe I just didn't see it. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, Mark, what do you think about these? You have a lot of experience in the airsoft field. I think this is a very good steal. Why? Because back when we started playing airsoft, I should say we, because you and I started at different times, um, if you wanted a full metal uh, airsoft gun for around this price, you had to build it. And the cost to build one of these was almost, well, for good level stuff such as internal, externals, and whatnot, close to like 500 something dollars. Now it's only 200 I mean, what does this world come to, Bob? I don't so know. Affordable. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, I was actually really bummed when Jim from Caterway told me they're discontinuing the CQR. I was like, why? Like, it's a really great gun for oh, CQB, yeah. and it's really affordable. Yeah. And they told me this. I was like, that totally makes a huge amount of sense. So I'm really happy for the Airsoft community uh, because it's just that much more affordable, which is awesome all around. Seriously, 200 bucks for a full mount on 4 and it has the same 2GX gearbox, the same parts and everything, and it's only 200 bucks. Excuse me, 199.95. What's up, DA Player 5? I did notice you. Um, oh, that's funny. Uh, Terry Ward, I'm considering a KWA for my next gun. What good options do I have for at a sub-300 price? Well, if you're still watching right now, I'll assume you just heard our entire spiel on the KWA uh, KM4s. They're currently available on Airsoft.com. Check them out right now because if you know, you're looking sub-300, this is $200, which is awesome for a full metal guy from KWA. Um, anywho, we also have... Uh, we've re I'm going to make a meme out of that later. Um, we, we have thousands of products we just restocked on airsoftgi.com. So if you've been waiting for stuff to head back on our website, head back on our website right now because it just got restocked. Uh, we also have a lot of new custom rifles that are dropping every darn day, it seems like. So if you head to our website, search custom guns, we've got a couple different sections. Uh, Frank just dropped a perfect tactical trainer on there, didn't he? Yep, and I have it here, but I was going to say on that side, but it's okay, I'll walk around. That's a spirit, Mark. Uh, that you, guy. Uh, yes, uh, grab a couple of custom guns or whatnot, or we can go over this stuff first. Go right, on. Let's go over this okay. All right, so if you guys want to hear about the cut or see the custom guns, just wait a little bit. We got some more new products to go over. Um, and then, without uh, going further in depth, we also have a patch package dropping this Thursday. Uh, it's next Thursday. Next Thursday? Okay. Oh, October 1st. BB Wars Friend or Foe Mystery Patch Package. Uh, it's $5. Um, now, it's, there's going to be 1,000 pieces and there's GI gift certificates in them, I believe. There's about a thousand dollar gift certificates, a 500, I believe there's a 700, and a 500, and a 250, and. A twenty, a fifty, a hundred and fifty, and a twenty. It's gonna be a lot of those too. So for only five bucks, you're gonna win a lot more than you can, than what you pay for. So there's gonna be a bunch of cool patches too, some pretty new patches as well. Um, so yeah, I'll be making that mystery box mix maybe tomorrow, and you guys can see it on the website hopefully by the end of the day, um, by the end of business business day tomorrow, um, on airsoftgi.com for more details. Mm. Okay, uh, shout out, Bob. Please, Dev 
Dev T6 Group 16, your shout out is approved. Uh, would you recommend Apex Tactics rifles, Mark? Which one was the Apex? Is that the. You mean the Apex R5s or Ape, the. I think they're talking the Apex Tactics ones. They're pretty good rifles. Um, I'm not going to say they're bad, but every gun has the pros and cons. Um, but for that price, though, I'd still get the KWA KM4. But um, Apex Tactics are actually pretty good in the four rifles as well. I was going to say, I had a fun time with the Apex R5. Like I it, haven't shot it that much. That's why I yeah. can't provide input. So. Yeah, and, I mean, I used it at a game on the East Coast, and I had a really, a really good time all day with it. So, I mean, if that's something you want, I would say go for it. Um, do, 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 it's very hot in here, guys. Tell Insight to open, please. That's from Joey Marku. Insight, please open. I'm sure they have a good reason for not. I mean, regulations these days are tough to get by and takes a lot of money, time, and effort. Um, okay, well, anyways, uh, before we go any further on questions, um, why don't we go over some of these new products, and then we'll talk about BB Wars Counterattack. So, we've got some cool new products from PTS in, uh, some that... Uh, I'm a few. I'm interested in and some that I already have. Wait, switch with me because I don't have gas left. Anymore. That's a spirit. Okay, so um, PTS is coming out with new enhanced polymer grips, um, not only for you know vertical grips but also for pistol grips for your gun. Uh, this is for a gas blowback gun. It's got uh, obviously you can see texturizing and as you can see, good for gas blowback because there's no slot for a motor. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, and we have the AEG version here. I see the, um, this one does not have backstrap, oh, but we see. do sell the one with the backstrap as well. And it's pretty good aggressive texturing. It's actually very, really aggressive texturing for like that much amount of material. That's for AEGs. But the oops. The best part I do find about this, other than the um, nice. other than the texture grip that you find both on the gas blowback and AEG variants, um, is this. I can take it out. I'll show you. As you can see, it's a see-through. Those are heat sink holes to allow for heat dissipation, especially if you're shooting a lot on semi, especially those milsim games. If not, then the coils armature will come apart. And since it allows for better cooling efficiency, you can get better efficiency out of your entire gun. Now, Bob probably went to sleep a few miles back, but that's okay. We'll bring him back here. Talk about the gas pullback one. Totally oh, tuned out. Yeah. Um, I mean, essentially, you need a different grip for a gas pullback as opposed to an AEG gun because of the you know presence of a motor in an AEG and the lack of one in a gas pullback rifle. Um, so, you know, it's nice to have options. I know a while back, you know, when I was looking for a pistol grip for, let's say, like my AK uh, or more specifically my LM4, you know, it was a little hard to find because you had to find specifically one for that can accommodate a gas blowback setup. Um, Zane Case, Bob, do you think the KGW Tactical 22 uh, is a good uh, gas bug rifle? Yeah, I've had some fun with that. It's a good counter sniper. Uh, and I got your Epic Panda patch today. Woohoo. Thank you, Zane. Appreciate it. I hope you rock that with extreme due diligence and awesomeness. See, I don't uh, even have a pat all the accent patch yet. We gotta ask for one, Mark. That's right. I still gotta ask you for things. Anyway, work! The last PTS product is pretty foamy uh, uh, strike face plate carrier. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm glad PTS is coming out with that just because, I mean, they're a product that pretty much a lot of people want. It's interesting that they're. You know, their foam is softer, so, you know, they're not as rigid, so it's going to be a little bit easier on your back. It's, it's going to be a little easier on your yeah. back. It still holds its shape, but, for example, if you need to, like, tie your boot or fix your, just, like, fix your pant leg or something, if you're trying to reach for, like, another dump pouch, and you can't flex because your plate carrier, because the plate itself, whether you're running real plates, which sometimes I do, which is stupid, but um, I still do it anyway. Um, it allows you to be more more flexible and more relaxed on the field. Um, but, yeah, I might put this. Actually, I might get some of these and put it on my weighted... Uh, vest when not working out, so I'm never doing that stuff. Phoenix Teddy Airsoft. Bob, do you still have our axe and sword in your office? It's actually not my office. It's actually in my reliquary at home, the special section of my uh, place back home where I keep awesome, awesome, legit airsoft relics. Uh, it is in there with a lot of cool stuff, and I uh, actually hit... Uh, why don't hit, I lovingly tap my girlfriend from it from time to time uh, when she's being annoying. <laughs> I'm like, hey, <laughs> hey, stop that. Hey, uh, anywho, Just tip. Oh, stop it. Um, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Let's see. Uh, anywho, so, so there's some new cool new products coming out from uh, PTS. Uh, stay tuned for this in airsoftgi.com, especially if you're looking for some uh, plates. Uh, why don't you grab that stuff from Lancer Tactical? Fire in the hole, Bob. <clears throat> ah. Okay, so we've got some Lancer Tactical Gen 2 combat pants. These are in. Uh, I believe it says uh, Jungle Digital. Um, you can probably see what they resemble. Uh, but it's cool. We've got the knee pads already installed. Is that Lancer Tactical as well? Mm 
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, Mark was wearing this earlier. It's a Lance Tantrum combat shirt, legitimate shirt, you know, cut off at uh, the Never bicep. Uh, looked pretty good on Mark because uh, it fit him very well. Uh, yeah. He's a very svelte figure. Uh, probably wouldn't look as good on me. Check it out on Instagram. So, check out Instagram. You can see the cool new photo, and we're doing the pretty cool photo shield. Put those up, photos up once we're done editing it. And, um, yeah, check Bob's Instagram, too. Indeed. Bob the X-Men. Um, let's see. Jack Comfort. Oh, Bob, okay. please, I'm begging you. Crytac Vector. Uh, you don't have to beg me. There's nothing I can do for the Crytac Vector. Um, I, you know, I've heard some rumors from uh, Crytac themselves that you know they're looking at coming out coming out with it. But unless they say anything more and they don't tell us anything, you know, there's nothing I can do. And uh, your your efforts will be best spent uh, contacting Crytac themselves to register how much you want one and how willing you are to buy one. Uh, but I have heard rumors that they are going to be coming out with one. Uh, an AEG variant. And it's funny because I asked for blowback and they looked at me like I'm an idiot because it was kind of stupid. Because the whole point of the system is to mitigate blowback. Uh, however, I do like some blowback. Um, nice. Hi, Bob and Mark. Y'all uh, y'all two guys are the best. Damn, Bob. Didn't know you were like that to your girl from Richard Cantu. I mean, yes. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not like kidding her. I'm just like poking her because it's just a funny, it's a cool looking sword. And Stop it, Mark. Uh, now my, the sword. No, my girlfriend is a very lovely girl that you can uh, probably find on Instagram through some of my photos, but uh, she is awesome. Uh, it'd be fun to bring her on this live show. Uh, I'm sure Mark can talk to her about... Uh, uh, food! All, well, Filipino food and in addition to any other uh, Filipino cultural things. Um, does BB Wars have an age limit? Uh, actually, our age limits really just come down to what the field uh, is allowing. I'm not sure exactly off the top of my head for Code Red. I think it's 14. It might be 12 years old. I have to double check on that. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, we're very open. We we actually want our BB Wars games to be able to be available to the widest uh, audience possible. It's, they're not milsom games. We're just out there to have a heck of a lot of fun with some cool scenarios at some great fields sponsored by some great companies. Um, <laughs> sure, Bob from Richard can't do. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Um, do 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 do. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's up, Mark? Um, oh yeah, let's. This is a cool custom. Let's bring it out. Bring it out. Okay, so Mark was fiddling around with this earlier today on Instagram, and again, I mean, our tech department just does some world class work. I can already tell this is based off Neck One Platinum. Um, you have the cell sheet right there, Mark. Here, why don't I, why don't I hold you on do that. that? Okay, so this is obviously based off Neck One Platinum, and most of our guns are actually based off Neck One Platinum. Why? Because it's affordability and reliability and performance. Um, Echo One being o uh, Echo One Planet OEM by VFC already provides a stable platform, but for for our customers, we whoa. Ooh. we try to well yeah we um we try to make impr uh, improve it even more. So with that being said, this one is the M4 Hyper Shock. Sounds like a music. Uh, so the Hyper Shock it features the Madwell PWS DI key mod rail system in addition to the Vism. The Vism Optic and the uh, VFC PEC-15 are included. Um, also, a bunch of the um, vertical grips, pistol grips, and stocks are going to be Mad Bull, except I believe this is Mag Pull, and the Mad Bull MFT and Battle uh, Minimalist Mal Battling Stock, so Mr. First Tactical as well. Um, also, the internals going to have been upgraded with the GI Polycarnate Palm Piston, as well as a what else? Lone X Tappet Plate, um, and the gun has been reshimmed and tuned for proper alignment from the motor gear, the the, um, the pinion gear, gear oh. and then as well uh, connected to the uh, belt gear. Angle gauge has also probably been corrected as well. So uh, the best part is the paint job and then how to use a net and different colors of paint to provide a more different like texture-ish appearance to the gun so it allows it to be blend well in different environments. Now I would say the best part is the tech work however close second would be the damn good paint job on this thing. Uh, they're constantly uh, just coming out with great work here. Um, also uh, I don't know if you uh, omitted this from the list but there's also a Manta rail cover here connected yes. to the pressure pad uh, which is awesome. The cable is routed perfectly in this um, but yeah now the the paint job is a just amazing, superb, superb. Um, sublime section. even. Um, but yeah, no, our, our techs uh, do the paint job uh, by hand, obviously. Um, so uh, hopefully we can get uh, get one of them to get on get on camera and talk about how specifically they do some of these paint jobs. So pretty awesome. What's uh, what's the price uh, on our website for this? This one will be going for I believe about close to a thousand. 
close to a thousand dollars. That makes sense because of all the different accessories and work that's Internal, gone into this. Because yeah. uh, I mean, a lot of folks like you know do some of this balk at a thousand dollar price tag for yeah. good reason. It's you know it's a lot of money. It's fair. Uh, however, you know these are custom guns. Obviously, they're not stock, and they, these do come with a lot of awesome accessories. You so. Save a couple hundred dollars, and it's already assembled. So. Yeah. Yeah, as Mark is saying, essentially you're going to be saving money as if in if you tried to put this gun together just by buying the parts yourself, the accessories, the yeah. internal parts, whatever. It's going to cost more, and that's not even going to count putting it together and the custom paint job. And so the work done to it too. Yeah. So time is money, and uh, time is something we all something that I wish there was more of. It's time very philosophical, Mark. <laughs> I've been all my Facebook posts. I've been philosophical Facebook posts. Uh, <laughs> Patty Eckholt, your shout out is approved. Um, all right, so this is uh, already up on our website, I believe. Not yet. Okay, so stay tuned to airsoftgi.com for when this drops on our website because more than likely this is going to go fast. Our custom guns have been selling really well lately, and we are pushing them out almost on the daily. So we have other painted guns as well. There's one I believe called the Antagonist, it's also painted, featuring the KWA LM4. So that awesome. one's on the website. Awesome. So take one last gander of this before it goes off camera. Care of Mark. Here you go, Mark. Kudos to the tech department. And, yeah. Uh, uh, Aaron, follow him on Instagram. I believe it was a Hatter Mad again. I believe. Am I wrong? Uh, I will neither confirm nor deny that. It sounds like uh, the, is uh, Mark Mission Impossible. Is movie. Mark Filipino? No. I'm Hawaiian. Filipino American. Um, okay, that was a good question. Timberwolf or M and P? That is very debatable. I'm tempted to say Timberwolf for myself, uh, but Mark, you own an M and P, don't you? I own, I own both the M and P and oh, really? the Oh, really? Oh, wow. They're both mine. Nice, well played. But I do like them. Why? Because I don't know. I just like they just freaking awesome. And because the real farm it has a higher tank grip, as I was uh, told, and shooting the real version, uh, the real farm counterpart is actually a lot of fun to shoot. So I haven't shot a, a the the Glocks um, yet, Glocks or the uh, Timberwolves. Um, but I know Glocks and Timberwolves are chambered in nine and forty. Well, Glocks have a lot of different. Lines. Okay, see, I, I'm not familiar with all those firearm uh, calibers and whatnot, but I know Bob is more familiar with that. That's why I was asking him. But I want to shoot more. Yeah, there are a wide variety of calibers available for different models of Glocks, so that's pretty awesome. Um, uh, let's see, someone had a question. Uh, Jacob, oh, Mark, is it good to go to BB Wars alone? Oh, yeah, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. That way, um, if you mess up or if you slip and fall, your friends won't laugh at you. Um, I, <laughs> I personally have, over my course of uh, airsofting or my airsoft career, I've gone to many events alone, and generally it's because... You know, I'll have friends that will bone out last minute, or life happens. You know, a family emergency will happen. They'll, you know, they'll not be able to go. I've actually had almost more fun at some events where I don't have friends going because it forces me to, you know, try and talk to the people and make new friends. Um, that's actually that's kind of how I met. Uh, you know, a lot of the folks that I ended up working here at GI with is, you know, my friends decided not to go, and I decided to go play recreational or stuff by myself. Made a lot of new friends. Uh, and honestly, BB Wars, it's you know, it's not a milsome event. Um, you can come out, and it's it's much more relaxed as far as you know regulation of airsoft. So yeah, come on out, uh, get a ticket, and have a good time. There's gonna be raffles and a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, all right, what do we got there? That is the perfect tactical trainer, I believe, the SDH. Yes, we talked about it. Um, Bob mentioned it earlier. This is the... Actually, I'll go this way. Perfect tactical trainer, the SCAR, Kinetic SCAR SDH. Why? Because this is a real farm kinetic M-lock rail system. Come on, camera focus. There we go. So, yeah. Pretty cool M-lock all in all three areas, and you have extended top rail for some people that prefer to mount their uh, lasers or flashlights up top as well, or if you want to move that iron sight where the scar is, and you can choose to run a flip-up iron sight from there as well. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty cool. Oh yeah, based off the VFC Mark 17, I love VFC Mark 17s. Yes, you do. Because they're quick disassembly, and the fact that they're just a pretty damn good rifle. Anything VFC is a pretty damn good rifle. Um, so you, great. so you still have the standard uh, ambidextrous controls in addition to the the MVG, the Magpul Vertical Grip, um, which is mounts directly onto the rail system itself, mainly for external rail. So when you have your hand, it's actually pretty flush and pretty smooth. Um, for real farm, that would be equivalent to uh, proper weapon manipulation, I guess, and recoil control. 
Are you asking me a question? I am asking. Oh, she does tuning you out. I don't know what she said. It's okay, Bob. But here, what are your thoughts on this um, Mark 17 by by Head Tech Frank? The former Head Tech Frank, current head of the purchasing department. You're gonna piss off Aaron Moore by saying that. Um, I think <laughs> he's a lot bigger than you. Um, yeah. I think. I mean, just on overall aesthetics, I love the look of this gun. I always like this this uh, style of scope. Um, however, you know, with this rail set on it, I think it just looks so much more aggressive and a good long gun platform. Um, you know, it's very comfortable. Uh, my only issue is just, you know, I would want to make sure, you know, I get a couple extra mags of this because it's his Scar H. Yes. Um, so, I mean, that's, if I was going to get this gun, I would just make sure I get the mags at the same time because I always get frustrated when I like, I buy part of a setup for a gun and then I need to get the, the second half and it's out of stock or like maybe not, not necessarily out of stock, like nobody has it. Sometimes if you... If you wait too long and you know everything gets sold out, it can be a long time before everyone in like the entire country will get it back. So you know you want to make sure if you're if you're going to get a gun like this, you get a few extra mags at the same time. Um, however, I like the fact they're putting real steel rails on these guns. It makes it much more intuitive, especially if you are a real steel shooter or you have a real Scar H. Um, it's really cool, and they've done a lot of work just machining to get that rail on there. Um, so a lot of custom work that's done by someone who has a lot of experience in that field. Um, Jacob O, uh, Bob, I'm on your side. Give me a shout out. I appreciate that, which is why your shout out is approved. Hey, Bob, what mag pouches do you use for your MP9? I actually use a combination. Uh, I have those SMG mag pouches uh, from HSGI, the extremely long ones. They work pretty well. Uh, I also have a custom G code um, uh, MP9 magazine holster. Um, it was kind of a one off made for me a couple years back. Uh, works really well. Um, so yeah, that's what I do for my MP9. I have suggest the HSGI ones, since they're more or less readily available. Excuse me. Excuse Bless me. you, Mark. <coughs> and you check out the Airsoft GI uh, Kinetic STH Perfect Tactical Trainer uh, in our custom gun sections. It will be on the under the Perfect Tactical Trainer section. Also, the new product section. And the new product section. All right. Well, answer more questions first. Yes, yeah, someone asked uh, earlier, I don't know if it's Culture Cult or someone else, but someone asked a good beginner uh, chest rig to get. Uh, the Griffin Golem chest rig is always my go-to for that because it's stupid cheap, like really affordable. Uh, I think I got around like $13 or $15, and it's actually really well designed for the price. You get uh, three integrated magazine holsters. They can hold uh, three M4 mags apiece or two AK mags apiece. Uh, now, they're sewn in there, so you're not going to be able to remove them, but, I mean, for uh, Airsoft, that's perfect for pretty much anything you need. There's also Molly on the left or right of those pouches, so there are space to attach things, and you can actually open up the entire pouch on the inside. Uh, the matte pouch, basically the internals of the pouch, is the entire pouch. So you can put, you know, Big League Chew, other forms of bubble gum, uh, maps, tools, anything else you need. Uh, I usually carry Big League Chew bubble gum, beef jerky, and a map. Um, beef jerky. Beef jerky doesn't sound good right now, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's your favorite beef jerky? Teriyaki. Or really spicy. Who makes it? Yeah, uh, you know when you go to like smaller like uh, gas stations and yeah. they have them like it's in like a flat like yes. panel. Like it's like homemade or it's yeah. like delivered there. That's my favorite. Tastes really good. I just I was like, look at the contrast of our skin color on the camera. Yeah, I'm really white and you're not yellow. yellow. <laughs> I, whoa, you went there. I did not. You went uh, white, I went yellow. It doesn't matter. Okay, okay. Jeez. <laughs> Hashtag racism. Um shout out, Mark. To who? Phoenix Teddy Airsoft. Phoenix Teddy Airsoft, your shout out is approved. Well played. Uh love you, Bob. Also we miss you too, Mark, and tell Daniel I'm still sorry, down with the Empire. I may just tell him that or I may just make him feel bad about losing. Um uh, but thank you, Phoenix Teddy Airsoft. Um Shopping. Do, do, do. Hey, Bob, I'm 17 and tried to get an account on airsoftjoy.com, uh, but it would not let me. Um, what gives? Uh, well, I highly suggest uh, if you're having issues uh, making an account on airsoftjoy.com, it, like if it's not working, hit up our customer service department because maybe there's an issue with our website or maybe there's something you're not clicking. However, um, I believe in the United States, as I'm, I'm sure you know a lot of us know, including Mark and I, is that you can't, if you're under the age of 18, you can't just buy an airsoft gun. You do have to have your parents' permission. Uh, and there's an easy form to fill out uh, as long as you get their permission and send it back to us. Uh, so that could be some of the issue if you're trying to form an account or make an account and then buy immediately and you're buying an airsoft gun. That probably is the issue. Uh, but hit up our customer service uh, line if you have any questions. They're there, and they're awesome, and they're Airsoft players. Yes. Uh, Jacob Ham, your shout-out is approved. I can't remember if I did give you a shout-out earlier already, but it's approved nonetheless. Okay. 
Uh, best AG for around four hundred dollars. Mark. Mm, let's see, best AG. Wait, he, yeah, he said AG. EG yeah. or what? I think he said AG. Oh, we have some customs for under four hundred dollars. So that's that's to be a first. FMG four is gonna be another one. Our G four, um, Echo yeah. One Platinums. I believe the Crytex as well. So the word best is a very broad term. Correct. So you gotta find what's suitable to your playstyle. Yeah, I mean, I, I would go with uh, what Mark said. I would shout or not shout, shout out. out. I would give a bunch of different suggestions like the Echo One Platinums, uh, the Crytek series, uh, some of the higher end G and G models. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's basically like what you know, what exactly are you looking for? For me, it's out of the box performance, which is why I recommend the Echo One Platinums or the Crytek uh, Crytek series. Uh, however, our custom guns, if you're looking for um, something like a little bit more unique or something that's already put together like our FMG 4s, right on the box perform phenomenally because they're uh, they're OEM by Lonex or Lonex, however you say it, and they're, uh, we have rails and other accessories we put on them uh, by our world class tech department. World class tech department. Again, the time it takes to put on a rail, it's already assembled for you and it's affordable price. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mark and Bob. Nice watch, Mark. I assume you mean to. Yes, G Shock. Uh, and Airsoft is the best. And shout out to Belleville, Texas, or Beeville, Texas. Beeville, Texas, your shout out is approved. As is Airborne Action's shout out, which is approved. Um, I need to see. spell with the Q, guys. Well, they can't hear that over the interwebs. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. Let's see. What is the best M4 for under $250? I want to be able to, to be a DMR, have a DMR role and be able to assault the enemy. That's a it's interesting perfect. question. It's perfect. We were talking about earlier, the KWA M4. Yeah, I mean, the KWA bucks. M4 is is great for under $200. However, what if he was going to jump, like, want to jump straight into the DMR platform? You could. You can, have, you can upgrade. Um, you can buy the parts and you can assault. Uh, very true. I do not like Jag. Didn't Jag Precision just come out with uh, an SR10 recently? They did come out with SR10. It is a key mod. I believe it's available for 220 Yeah, I remember it was pretty affordable. has a nylon fiber upper and lower receiver as well as a metal rail system. Not Jag. It's a um, Echo One. Oh, shoot. My bad. Uh, yeah, Echo One just came out with uh, these new guns, like Mark said. It has a polymer body. However, it does come pre-installed with a key mod rail, which or, is Or, awesome. before I jump to this custom, I can show you guys another custom. Oh, you could, Mark. You could. Ow, my legs. I'm getting old. They're getting old. How old are you, Mark? 20. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm getting old for my age. Stop it. Alright, speaking of Echo Ones... We have a new custom rifle. I'm going to bump into Bob here. Mm -hmm. And this features the Echo One Polymer as well. Let me make sure you guys know. Oh, this is the gun we were just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But with a few internal upgrades by our tech department. Mm -hmm. So this one obviously is going to feature the Madball Checkmate Flash Hider. I think that's pretty cool. Compensator, excuse me. Um, in addition to that, the some minor upgrades are going to include obviously externally the Angle 4 Grip 2 by Magpul USA. Mag Magpul USA MOE stock, sorry. Um, in addition to that, Lonex M4 air, air nozzle, uh, A1 torque motor, as well as a Lonex 363 6.03mm Type 4 barrel. But this is similar to what the uh, stock Echo One SR10 um, SR10 line is going to look like. So pretty damn cool, pretty easy to pull ball grade. And for a stock gun, it's pretty lightweight. Thoughts? Uh, honestly, like I think, uh, I think the fact that they're coming out with this is a good thing for more options, just because it seems like the price point for guns like these has been going down over the years. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so I mean, I think it's good for the airsoft community that you know they're able to get something they want at a cheaper price point, and the fact that it's coming with rails on it. So you know, polymer body that keeps the price down, it keeps it affordable, and you already have a key mod rail, which is what a lot of folks are wanting these days. Um, personally, like I could go back and forth between a uh, um, not MOE rail. What am I blanking on? M-Lock? M-Lock rail. Uh, M-Lock and key mod. Um, I kind of like both. Um, so I just, I'm just i glad this is in the market, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it does come with Crytek 8mm ball bearings. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm 22. Shut up, Mark. Thank you, Shattered Systems 1989. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, yes! Can you all make a Lone Survivor gun from Jacob Hamm? We actually have made a couple Lone Survivor guns. Uh, one was the Danny Dietz. I can't remember what the Marcus other one was. Luttrell. Marcus Luttrell. Uh, both of the guns look stunning. Um, 
uh, from a world-class tech department. They're based off of the loadouts from the movie. Uh, if you guys want to get one of those guns, I believe they're both sold out on our website already. Um, however, nice. we've got new customs dropping all the time. And if you really want to specifically make a gun from that movie, hit up our customer service line because they, they're in direct contact with the tech department and they can walk you through how to make that happen and have our techs put it together. Exactly. We can They can take the same amount of parts and build the same gun for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, hey, Bob, do you know where I can get one of those helmet pouches for a GoPro external battery? Uh, it's a very interesting question. I mean, uh, obviously, specific pouches are available on a wide variety of websites. We do have uh, external battery pouches on our website <laughs> Website made by Condor Outdoor. Um, it's a tech sheath pouch. Um, now, it's uh, it can be mounted on your belt. However, you can jerry-rig it to the back of the helmet easily using just a little bit of Velcro. In fact, that's how uh, just about everyone I know does it anyway. They Velcro it to the back of their helmet. Um, so you can get one of these Condor Outdoor tech sheath pouches and uh, basically just get some Velcro from Home Depot, Velcro it to the back of your helmet, you're good to go. Um, Wyatt Lee, your shout out is approved. Let's see. All right, let's see if we have any other questions. Um, in case you're wondering uh, for BB Wars counterattack at Code Red 2.0, I'm really excited for this, not only for the fact that it's at Code Red's brand new location and brand new set of fields, but also smoke grenades are going to be available for use, which at most fields in Southern California are not available to be used. So this is going to make it a little bit different for this game, and I'm really excited. Um, Bob, you should get sponsored by Big League Chew. I, I should, Zane Case. Thank you. I will contact them. Um, Bob, are you married? Not currently. But we have to go to another state for that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Is that a combat shirt behind Mark? That's from Herd Films 23. Yes, that is some sort of... It is literally a combat shirt. Sure. Yeah, that's from Lancer Tactical. It should be dropping our website very soon. Okay. With short sleeves. They call it the summer shirt. Literally, it's called the summer shirt. Well, yeah, it's, it's a short shirt. Um, should I buy the KWA LM4 or the King Arms M4 GBBR? And can I get a shout-out, please? Yes, Panther Airsoft, your shout-out is approved. Um, personally, I would suggest the KWA, KWA LM4. It's incredibly reliable. Uh, it shoots really far. Um, and I've just found it functional and upgradable as all heck. Um, I mean, obviously, gas guns aren't as upgradable as AEGs because there's less moving parts. Uh, however, it is just a solid gun right out of the box. Your thoughts, Mark? My thoughts would be, same as yours, I would stay with the KWA, KWA LM4. Why? Because there's upgradability, being a tech, uh, as well as having friends in the tech business that have provided me with the same knowledge. Um, uh, Aaron, uh, Gene, um, you know you guys out there. Um, I have allowed me to upgrade my LM4 back when I still had it to shoot close to 700 feet per second just for kicks and loops. Oh, yeah. six? No, no, it was like five or six. Yeah, there but you don't, you don't use it on the field. You just no. use it to shoot at targets. Yeah, but it was just my out of curiosity to see how far I could push it. So I was like, whoa, that's freaking rad. The cool. Samuel Viegas, uh, please forgive me if I didn't say your last name correctly, um, has a really good question. Uh, best secondary weapon for a sniper? I want to hear Mark's thoughts first. It depends what you want. If you want more like an SMG or like gas blowback, we have the KWA MP, KMP9. Um, there's also the MP7. If you want a pistol or sidearm, there's FNX 45, Smith & Wesson M&P. Um, another cool new pistol is the Echo 1 Timberwolf as well. Um, but if you want like a, also another SMG is AEG, is a P90. That's a more common one that people use. Or you can just have an uh, AR on the side. It's up to you. Yeah, and Mark gave a lot of good options right there. Uh, for me personally deciding, I would go with the uh, KWA HK45 gas pullback pistol because, uh, one, it's a darn good pistol, but also it's got a huge mag capacity at around 28 rounds. So essentially you have a primary as a secondary. Um, I just heard people say it, it actually fits pretty well since it's got that many rounds. However, if I was legitimately going to go for uh, a secondary that wasn't a pistol as a sniper, I would either go with the KWA MP9 uh, the Echo One Gat, uh, the Crytac uh, SDP, or the Crytac PDW. Um, those are all really good guns that are compact. Um, I probably wouldn't go with the MP7 just because it's a little heavier uh, than the MP9, and I'd want to keep that weight off of wherever I was holding it. Um, do, do, do. Bob, are you guys ever coming back to Wisconsin? Uh, we are hopefully planning on coming back to Wisconsin soon. I don't know if that'll be before the end of the year, however. Uh, but I would love to go back there. It was really fun. The, the community there was amazing. Uh, oh, cool. We got another custom to show off before the show ends. Let's do this. Okay. 
Bob. Mark. Can you hold the gun? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so guys, this is also based off the uh, Echo One Platinum, except in black. We also have another one built in Storm. <laughs> it's in gray. Uh, it's pretty cool. It does feature the SE Star optic. Oh, it's very bright. Mm -hmm. My eyes! Mm -hmm. My eyes! Um, it does also feature the metal PWS DI rail system, but the Besky fits inside the rail system. They hit the That's pig. pretty cool. Ah! Yep. The is good. Indeed. That sounds good right now too. I think Lechon, focus, focus, rice. Mark, focus. We're not gonna get Lechon anytime soon. Uh, I might. Sadly. Um, but oh, that you do have the Mansa top rail pressure switch mount as well, in addition to the GIP pompous internals as well as Lonex tappet plate, Lonex 6.03 300 millimeter tight bore barrel, in addition to the A1 torque motor, um, in addition to the gears have being reshimmed and the motor height. AOE is also corrected as well. So, pretty cool. All the accessories you see on this gun will come with it. It does also come with a uh, EPM magazine. Oh, excuse me. Mac PTS P Mag. I can't. High, cap high capacity magazine. So, that's pretty cool. And key mod all around. I definitely like the setup. It's very intuitive. Like, it's very comfortable right when you get your hands on it. And I also like the scope because it does have a little glow dot right on top, which is really nice in case you don't want to go for the uh, magnified optic. So it's a really good it's setup. It's very streamlined, and as like the stock, it's like a minimal, minimalist rifle. So, See, how much is it going to go for on online? This one will also be a close to around a thousand. So features, everything's assembled already. Everything's all fine tuned. So like I said, a thousand may be a lot, but imagine the time it takes to do that to get it right the first time. So and also the time it takes to assemble without scratching or anything, or and all the fine work, so everything lines up properly. All the fine tuning, all the hard work and hours spent on it is all done and all for you instead of you having to do it on your own. And as a tech, I know that's also very frustrating sometimes, especially if you mess up and a part breaks or you don't do it right. So it's all assembled, it's all going to work, it's all going to function like how it's made. Peter Garrow was asking, what is the gun called and what is the price range? This gun is called the Agitator. The M4 Agitator. Agitator. Um, now it's it's uh, looks like it's gonna be just above a thousand dollars. You can find this and all of our other customs uh, in the custom section of our website and airsoftgi.com. Um, uh, shoot, someone was asking, what is a good starter rifle for sniping? Uh, I was gonna suggest JG Bar 10, Mark. Uh, I would agree with JG Bar 10 as well. Why? Because it's upgradeability. Um, if you want to bump up, I believe there's like GIG G 700s as well for around 200 or so. There's also, oh, duh, there's the um, BFC M40A5 as well as the ASG uh, M40A3. Yeah, especially if you're looking for M40s, those are both really good options. Um, Gas and spring. Bob, what shirt, what size shirt do you wear? Uh, usually large, sometimes extra large because sizing is different for different companies. Different shirt. And if it's like super flexible ones like we have, it's going to be really, you know, order size down. Ooh, burn. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. New Crytek LVOA ETA, please. Uh, we don't have, a, we don't currently have an exact ETA. However, uh, we're going to be putting out a video uh, on the LVOA very soon, uh, just showing you some of the features. However, some of that is subject to change when it finally hits the market, which should be hopefully before the end of the year, which uh, I think would be awesome. Uh, all right, why don't you take this real quick? <coughs> all right, our. Uh, <coughs> All right, uh, Victor Aguilar. Uh, I can't. I I can't really like like the photo while I'm on here. I've got a live show to do, but I'll try and check it out on Instagram after I get out. Uh, thoughts on Polar Stars? Um, I think they're great uh, and very effective. I personally don't use them just because I uh, I like to have feedback in my guns. However, uh, again, Polar Stars are very effective and consistent um, when used properly. Um, that I have told the story a million times, but I, I remember sending at Timber Spot 4 and 4.5. I sent 40 to 50 Rebels at a machine gun position. Uh, I didn't realize it was two Polar Star machine guns in a crossfire, but they took down about 50 Rebels in less than 30 seconds. So it was very impressive, and I do not doubt how effective they are. So then yeah. I show up, and then it's another story. Yeah, because Mark doesn't use a Polar Star, but his gun has a ridiculous rate of fire. <laughs> and it's an AEG. So, uh, they said, yeah. Some people are saying that the hand stop is facing the wrong way. That is incorrect. The hand stop is facing the proper direction. As you can see, the curvature of the hand stop would provide that the, your hand would go there. Well, I believe the the piece that he's thinking about it's that is... the smaller one. Yeah, the smaller one actually goes on front. I think he's yeah. thinking that the smaller one was reversed and put back on here. But this is actually the rear part of the hand There's stop. There's actually no right or wrong way. It's what you find functional in the matter. Good talk. Uh, <laughs> Um, 
Bob, what is a good starter gear setup? Um, you know, again, uh, I, I'll probably I'll say this a bunch of times, but the Griffin Golden Chest Rig is a great way to go if you're looking for a chest rig. If you like additional uh, accessories or a dump pouch, get the Griffin Golem, uh, or excuse me, the Griffin Dragon Spine Belt System. Um, you know, I just I recommend those because they're some of the most affordable setups on a website, and they're really functional. Because most people uh, that want a chest rig are going to eventually want a dump pouch. And you might as well get the the belt system because it comes with a dump pouch and another dual M4 magazine pouch that holds. Uh, each of those pouches holds three M4 mags or two AK mags. So if you get the if you get the chest rig and the belt system, and you're rocking M4 mags, you can hold um, 15 M4 mags for less than $30. It's ridiculous. So I would highly suggest those. Ridicule. Ridicule. Um, sell someone's dignity. We actually did that a few years back. We sold my dignity. It sold out, and I don't have any more of it. So maybe we'll sell my... Um, what were we going to sell again? It wasn't my dignity. It was... Uh, rhymes with dignity. It starts with... <laughs> no, it doesn't rhyme with dignity. Uh, no, it's like self... Self... Um, what was it? Shoot, what was it? My sense of honor... A sense of self-preservation. Uh, we're gonna sell a bunch of my different uh, positive feelings online, so we'll, we'll look into doing that again. Um, anywho, let's see if there's any other questions because we have to end this live show pretty soon. AKM4 Airsofter, your shout out is approved. Um, dude, wow, comments are going fast. Um, what would you recommend for someone who's just starting airsoft? Um, personally, I would recommend getting. Uh, possibly like a G4 or a Lancer Tactical or a combat machine, an affordable gun to see what kind of you know gun you would really like, just to at least get you out there playing. I'd also suggest, again, getting a Griffin Golden Chest Rig. It's like one of the most affordable options out there to carry extra mags. Um, so yeah, I would suggest those and get a good set of face protection or eye protection, depending on what you want to wear. I personally start with face protection because you don't want to get shot in the face before you're fully attuned with how airsoft is going to be played. Um, so sucks. yeah, uh, that's what I would suggest. What about you, Mark? Um, I would actually follow your vote because it also depends on your budget as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and that way, if you start with something a bit more affordable, you have more money in the long long run to get something. Um, once you finally find out what kind of play style you're going to have, Precisely. whether you, you know sniper, breacher, assaulter, anything like that. Um, anywho, um, all right, I believe that is going to be it for. Don't approve my shout out. All right, I won't. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, that is going to be it for our live show. And another shout out to Beeville, Texas. Your shout out is approved. But that is going to be our live show for September 22nd, 2015. Uh, thank you guys for staying tuned. We really appreciate it. Once again, I'm Bob the Axe Man Hildebrand. This is Mark from Marketing. From Marketing. And this has been the GITV live show. Bye bye, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow. <laughs> well, do it again. We'll see if we can go on that. Pew.